Welcome to the part 3. In this part we are going to see how we can use PyTorch Lightning to train our images. If you are not familiar with PyTorch Lightning, I would suggest to watch the 3.7 video because this shows you how to implement the PyTorch Lightning module step by step. But now we are not going to implement that. We are just going to review how it's already been implemented by me. So first for that we need to import the libraries which you can see here. I have discussed these libraries in detail in this video and also in my course on Udemy. So the next thing is a data reader. <coughs> if you are not familiar with data reader, you can take the course in which I teach, in which I taught how to implement this data reader step by step. One thing I have also implemented is the augmentation because a viewer has commented that how we can augment the data. So here I have already also augment introduced the augmentation. I have introduced two augmentation. One is the horizontal flip and other is vertical flip. If the uh, if the random value is greater than 0.5, then implement the augmentation. Whether it is vertical flip or horizontal flip, you can uncomment this, and you can also implement the shuffling of these channels. This is up to you. Another step is that you can also introduce more augmentation technique like introducing zeros randomly which is actually a cutout technique in imaging. Maybe you are familiar with that. I also normalize the data because in images we normalize the data by let's say standard scaling. This is our data reader. What is the purpose of data reader? As we knew that we can't pass all of the images at once. Let's say if our GPU memory is 2 GB or 4 GB or 8 GB, but we pass more images than it accept, it will give us an error. So we pass the batches of images so that it do not give us a memory error. This is why data readers are introduced. Let me see the shape of the data. If I pass a batch size of 8, if I pass a batch size of 8, then the 8 is batch size. 14 is the number of channel, 230 and 3841 are the dimensions and they are total 8 batches so there are total 8 labels. You can consider these batches are either as epoch. Let's say if we have 100 epochs and we can a batch size of 10 then each in then in each batch we have 10 epochs. The next step is to create Latvian module class which is the similar way I have created in 3.7 tutorial but instead of implementing neural network from scratch I'm use I'm going to use team create model but let me show you how this work in beginning by copy it from here okay the model name you can choose any model but I'm no, I'm going to choose ResNet 26D it will take some time to download the patent models which are basically on ImageNet and if I print this model you can see that the first layer that a convolution 2G layer has 3 input but in our case we have input of 14 so we have to replace this 3 with 14 in your data it can be any number depending upon the number of channels of EG you have you can have let's say 64 channel 32 channel so you have to replace the three with the number of channels you have in image basically we have three channels red green blue but in eeg we have multiple channels let's say 9 10 14 15 19 so you have to replace that here i am going to replace this 14 this 3 with 14 and going to put that in the same layer again after that i am going to use a linear layer why there is a thousand because in images image net we have thousand classes and this model is trained on uh, ImageNet data sets and in the last layer there are 1000 neurons so I take that 1000 and map it with 500 neurons then map this 500 with the 250 neurons and 250 neurons with the 1 neuron I am using BCE with logic slows because my data is a binary data whether they should understand the lecture or not this is the forward function this these all things have been explained in this in this video and these are also explained in the course which is available on Udemy. I will give the link in the description. So this is our model. Then we have optimizer. I have used AtomW optimizer. 
this is the train data loader which actually load the data in the form of batches the training step is basically train the model in and the training epoch and is that when a, when an epoch is completed this epoch is not the eg epoch this epoch is basically basically the term used in deep learning epoch and i hope so you are not confusing the eeg epochs and the deep learning epochs so when an, once an epoch is completed you have we can concatenate all the loss of all the batches and all the accuracies of all the batches and take the average of that and append it in a list and this the same thing goes with the validation data and the the test step is basically shows what is the accuracy f1 score roc we got using the with this data and for that i'm going to use scikit-learn because i believe scikit-learn have more functionality for evaluation and this provides a nice function that is classification report so let's see that and here we split the data based on the groups if you are not familiar with that that it means that you haven't passed the complete pl playlist because these things have already been explained in the the playlist and some of the concept have been explained in the course but most if you don't want to get the course you can just watch the previous all of the videos and this video will be a very easy thing for you and once the training is complete we also get the validation result and the test result there's no need to run any other extra function you got this function just because we have implemented this already and then you can plot the training accuracy and validation accuracy this is the end of this tutorial i know it's quite quick but if you are following me throughout this series this would be an easy thing and if you directly start it from this video or from this like from convolution 2d convolution neural network that's then this is going to be a difficult thing for you but if you are familiar with pytorch part load pytorch lightning particularly then i believe you don't find this whole code a very difficult thing to do uh, let me know in the comment section what it would be the next topic you want to learn and what is the mode of teaching you prefer whether you want me to write this code though line by line though i don't prefer that because it take a lot of time and energy and whether this thing is good for you like just i'm explaining the code you can ask me any question in the comment section and i would like to answer you there and this code will also be available on the github repository which link is also available in the description so one more thing you wouldn't get a very good result on this data set because the data set is very small so if you have a good data set you can expect a good result on using this data set i achieved an f score of i believe 98 percent on the data set which we have used previously which is actually intellectual development disorder data set using this technique that that's very quite good because our baseline on that data set is around 91 percent i believe so i would suggest you to use this data set on your own use this technique on your own data set and let me know what accuracy and effort score you got uh, thank you i think this should be end of this like tutorial this is a short three-part tutorial and I, I hope you would like that thank you